The Washington Post has a fascinating and frankly chilling article where it's drawing attention to something that I have not seen reported in the so-called mainstream media, which is that environmentalist ideas have made an appearance in two of the recent mass murder manifestos, the Christchurch murder of New Zealand and the El Paso gunman. And the article's called Two Mass Killings a World Apart Share a Common Theme, Eco-Fascism. And this is by Joel Ackenbach. And according to the Post, the alleged church, church Christ, I'm sorry, Christ Church shooter declared himself explicitly an eco-fascist and railed about immigrants' birth rates. And in the El Paso shooter's uh, statement, he bemoans water pollution, plastic waste, and an American consumer culture that is, quote, creating a massive burden for future generations. And the Post goes on to note some various aspects of environmentalism that can feed mass murderers and that have been endorsed explicitly by larger groups of white nationalists. For example, it talks about environmentalist apocalypticism and overpopulation catastrophism and how these can be extremely appealing as rationalizations for mass murder. So the Post says, quote, conservationists have a long history of wrestling with questions about immigration and population growth. Some of those on the environmental left have seen the explosion in human population as a primary driver of the environmental crisis. This argument has been adopted by racists. And it goes on to give an example from the El Paso shooter where he says, if we can get rid of enough people, then our way of life can become more sustainable. Now, the article notes that environmentalists have definitely tried to distance themselves from these killers and from white nationalists more generally, though the Post does say this, a refrain among environmentalists is that if anti-immigrant groups are genuinely concerned about degradation of the natural world, they're targeting the wrong people. Climate change hasn't been driven by poor people struggling to get by. The activities of wealthy nations have been the main historical source of greenhouse gas emissions, the depletion of natural resources, and the destruction of habitats. Now, I do want to stress that the Post is saying that anti-immigrant groups concerned with degradation of the natural world are targeting the wrong people. Not that, as I think it could be easy to uh, read in this article, that anti-immigrant mass murderers are targeting the wrong people. But actually, there's no real logical reason that somebody accepting the environmentalist ideology should not endorse mass shootings so long as they do target the right people. That is, if you have an anti-human goal, like you've eliminated any rational basis for opposing people who kill humans. And in fact, and I mean this seriously, policies that they advocate are essentially not that different from mass shootings, except that if followed, they would be deadly on a far greater scale. Yeah, well, I mean, here's a sobering fact, which is who has the lowest carbon footprint in the world? I mean, mass murderers. I mean, they're, they they have made up for their footprint uh, many times over, and you know, they're preventing future children from coming into existence. And people can say, well, that's not what I mean by reducing my carbon footprint. But if if you have that as an out-of-context goal or a, a primary goal, which is often presented as, like, this is really what we should be aspiring to, then it's perfectly logical that people uh, think about, <laughs> they think these kinds of things uh, are necessary, particularly if they kind of fail politically. They think, well, I'm, I'm going to at least do something um, on my own part. And then the issue of racism is interesting because I, I regard the whole modern environmental movement as as what I would call human racist, as in it, it has a bias, it has an animus against the human race, which it regards as unnatural and it regards everything else as natural. So it thinks if an activity is done by humans, then it's it's by that fact bad. Now, if you are a human racist, then how do you distinguish, you know, sort of how do you prioritize which human groups you oppose the most? Well, it makes a lot of sense to oppose them by how good they are or how prolific they are at producing more humans. So in a sense, these are consistent 
human racist. Now they can say, well, yeah, you should shoot the rich people too. But they're they're correctly, I think, saying that, well, if you have more kids and then these more kids are going to aspire to have more prosperous lives involving more energy, which is going to mean more fossil fuels, then yeah, it um, it makes sense. So I'm really glad that this angle is being shown, although it's it's abominable that it hasn't been shown earlier and that this this should just be the mainstream discussion that we are we are raising people to be anti-human and to yeah I mean to to believe that sort of mass human death or at least a, a you know a st- a mass uh sort of mass prevention of human reproduction is morally necessary. Well, if you believe that either mass death or mass prevented reproduction are morally necessary, then these guys are heroes.